Once you've downloaded the full resolution NAPE image, it's time to save it into your project folder. Right now I'm going to review proper folder structure and file management for all of my GIS classes. You should have a specific folder for this class, mine's labeled Geography 75, and then you should have a project folder for every lab we do in this class. I went ahead and labeled mine Lab 1 Spectral Profile. Inside of your project folder, you're going to have the same folder structure for every lab. Your original folder is where you're going to place any data that you download that you haven't edited in any way. Your working folder is where you're going to save things that you create or manipulate. And your final folder is for things like maps and lab reports. Once you have your original working and final folders inside of your project folder, it's time to go to your downloads and copy the original zip folder that you just downloaded from USGS with the NAPE image and put it into your original folder by right clicking on the original and pasting it. You can open your original, you're going to see a compressed folder with the image in it and what you need to do is right click on that and extract it here. Now I prefer 7-Zip, it's a free decompression software that you can download. Um, it's really easy to find, easy to download, and easy to use. And then once you right click you can select 7-Zip and extract here. And you'll, you'll see our two files pop up here in your original folder. Once they pop up you're going to want to delete the original zip folder and this is going to be uh, a step we take in all the labs from here on out. If you download any type of imagery, whether it's satellite imagery or aerial imagery, it's going to come in a compressed folder. Um, once you decompress it or extract it, you can delete the original zip folder so there's no confusion and you save file space. Okay, so now we have the image that we downloaded from the USGS Earth Explorer in our original folder within our project folder. It's time to open up Pro and bring the image in to the GIS software. Okay, once you have ArcGIS Pro open, you should get this screen. What we want to do is select Map. We're going to be bringing this imagery in to a regular map project. So you can go ahead and select New. I'm going to label this lab uh, or this project the same that I labeled my project folder. So Lab 01 Spectral Profile. This is just to keep from confusion. And now I'm going to save this into my project folder. So that is um, here on my desktop. Um, work, Columbia College, Spring 2023. And there's my class folder. And here is my project folder. Now you can save it inside of the project folder or inside of the working folder. That's totally up to you. Um, for right now, I'm going to save it inside of the project folder but outside of the three folders within it. Hit OK. So here we've got the name of the map project as well as where it's going to be saved. We're going to be creating a new folder for this project. Once you've created and saved your new map project in ArcGIS Pro, this is what it should look like. You have your map viewer here in the center your table of contents on the left side of your map viewer, and your catalog pane on the right. Now when you open other windows in ArcGIS Pro, they will open over here on the right. This is where all of your panes will be. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do is add a folder connection so we can bring that NAPE image into our map viewer. To do that, make sure you have your catalog pane open on the right, and right-click folders, select add folder connection. Now I want to add the project folder, so I'm going to navigate to it one more time. And here it is, I'm going to select it, just click it once and hit OK. And once it's connected, you can drop down this folders here in the catalog and you're going to see the, the Lab 1 spectral profile. Now the folder with the home on it, that's going to be uh, what houses your geo database. This is made every time you create a new project. And then the one without the home is going to be um, where your final and original and working folders are. So I'm going to open my original folder. And here is the NAPE image I downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it into the map. Once the image loads, 
It's building pyramids. That's how it renders it visually on your screen. Once it loads, it should zoom to that image. So this is what that nape image should look like of the Columbia area. Go ahead and zoom in and check out some of the features on the map. You can see it's pretty high resolution. You can see the detail here of Columbia Elementary. Here is the area known as the Labyrinth just beyond campus. And here's Columbia College campus. Now you can see here in the table of contents under the title of the image that there is a red band, a green band, and a blue band, right? And that's what makes this a color image. It ha was picked up by a digital camera that collects electromagnetic radiation in the green, red, and blue portions of the spectrum, the visible portions of the spectrum. Now what you'll notice as we do this lab is that um, this modern NAEP imagery also picks up a fourth band, which is infrared. And that's really useful for determining plant health, which we'll learn a lot more about as we work throughout this course. But the purpose of this lab is to create a spectral profile of this multi-spectral NAEP imagery. So to do that, you can right-click on the image here in your table of contents and select Create Chart. When that expands, you're going to select Spectral Profile which plots the distribution of pixel values across all raster bands. Once that's selected, you will notice that a window pops up below, as well as your chart properties here on the right side where your catalog pane was. Now what I'm going to do is find an area on this image that shows water. I think here's New Maloney's Reservoir here. I'm going to zoom in. In my chart properties, I'm going to select the Polygon Sketch Tool. I'm simply going to draw a box around pixels that I know are water in this image. And when I'm done, double click. And you'll see that it pops up here in the spectral profiles as well as here in the chart, right? Now I know this is water and the symbol color is already blue. So what I'm going to do is select on the label, type in water, and enter or hit tab to save the name for that spectral profile. Right, and so what this is showing you here is band one, your red band, band two, your gr blue, uh, green band, and band three, your blue band, the value for those bands in this image, right? So that's the reflectance value of those pixels um, that we know are water in the red, green, blue, as well as infrared bands, right? And so later on, I'll show you how to change the labels so we can have red, green, blue, infrared. Um, and we can put pixel value here on the y-axis. But what I want you to do is do the same thing I just did for water, but for other types of land cover. Um, now, in order to move where the image is, you're going to want to go to Map and Explore. This will deselect the polygon tool and allow you to move the image. And next, we want to select pixels that we know are forest, right? So here's a great example of forest. I'm going to create a new spectral profile draw a box or a polygon around these pixels, double click when I'm done. First thing I'm going to do is change the color to something like green, similar to forest, and then I'm going to change the name to forest and hit tab. And then look down here at the spectral profile. Now you can see the reflectance values in all the bands um, for forest, right? And you're going to do the same thing for urban. So you can find a neighborhood or find a parking lot, draw a polygon around that, change the color to something like gray, change the label to urban, and see where it pops up on the spectral profile. And you're going to do the same thing for a couple other land cover classes, right? You could zoom in on some grass, grasslands, and create a spectral profile for that. Um, I'm going to hit explore and move around some more. And you could even zoom in on some of this exposed limestone and do barren or or rock or something like that right create another spectral profile for that i'm going to let you decide how many classes you want to do uh, but as long as you have more than three spectral profiles in your chart that's great um, and so once you're done with this um what i want you to do is export your spectral profile as a graphic and that's what you're going to turn in for this lab, right? But first, I'm going to show you how to do a few things um, so that you can customize your chart. So you can 
So to do that, you can go to Act, um, General, and you can change the chart title to Land Cover Spectral Profiles. Right? And then you can change your y-axis to pixel value and add anything else you'd like. And you'll see that reflect down here. Um, one other thing you can do as well to kind of understand what's going on here a little more is you can actually right-click on the image in the table of contents and go to Symbology. When you're in Symbology, you'll notice that the primary symbology of this image is in red, green, blue, which makes sense, right? It combines the red, green, blue composites or bands to create a color image. But if I were to hit the stretch Symbology, you'll notice that the values of the image range from 16 to 239, right? So this is an 8-bit image, and that means that the values range from 0 to 255, 0 being the lowest or 0 reflectance, 255 being the highest, right? And right now, lighter or, or brighter valued pixels are a higher reflectance, and darker pixels are a lower reflectance. And so essentially what we're doing with this spectral profile is finding out what the unique spectral signature is for these different land cover classes, right? So water has a different value in red, green, blue, and infrared than forest, right? And that makes sense because it's a different type of um, land cover or it's a different type of surface. And so it has a different reflectance value of electromagnetic radiation. So the whole purpose of this lab is to understand how imagery is stored as well as um, how different surfaces on the Earth interact with electromagnetic radiation. So go ahead and check that out, the symbology, and, and check out the stretch. And you can easily change it back by selecting the drop-down and selecting RGB. So when you're done, uh, just turn in the exported graphic of your spectral profile with three or more land cover classes. All right. That's all I got for you. Thanks for watching.